and I become pixelated. Yeah, well, you can just shrink yourself all down. Oh, I see what you did there. You're in, so Hank is in control of this Google Plus Hangout on air, um, but, uh, but, you know, I'm here too. I matter a little bit, hopefully. Um, yeah, but I can just But anyway, yes, hi, welcome to our Google easy. Plus Crash Course Hangout. We're doing it. Hopefully. Um, I just went to the Crash Course page to see if this is working or not. It appears to be. And it is. Okay. Great. Um, so uh, we want to start by talking about Crash Course and education and what led us to make this channel. And then we're going to answer your questions on Twitter. You can tweet us at the Crash Course or uh, to our individual Twitters um, at Real John Green and at Hank Green, and we'll be answering as many questions as we can. But first, we're going to talk about um, how this channel came about and why we wanted to make it. Hank? It was all John's idea. <laughs> um, you, you two basically asked us if we had ideas for original content programming stuff that we couldn't afford to do on our own. And, um, ooh, I need to enable me. Ha, it's me now. Um, and so we, uh, we, we came at them with two ideas. Both of them were educational in nature. One was SciShow, and this is also SciShow headquarters here in Missoula. You can see if this is familiar to you from the news show uh, behind me. Um, and the other was Crash Course. And uh, we, what we wanted to do was sort of focus on what, you know, what we're good at, which is explaining things and learning things and, um, and sort of something that we thought would, would, in addition to being entertaining, might actually uh, help the world be a better place. Um, so that's how we got started. Was yeah, so one of, of the broad things that, one of the things that Hank and I always talk about when we talk about our ideas, when we talk about what we, um, stuff we want to make, is uh, whether it can do any good, like whether it can be a useful thing in the lives of, of the pe people who uh, participate, participate in it with us. And uh, we felt like both with Crash Course and SciShow, SciShow you know, committed to sharing um, scientific learning and Crash Course committed to um, you know, making educational materials available free to everyone that are engaging and uh, fun, but also genuinely educational. Um, we felt like both those things could, could do some good. Um, so we're really, we're really proud of Crash Course and SciShow and uh, almost Gosh, almost five months in now. Um, it's been it's been quite an adventure. Definitely the most fun, interesting thing I've ever done on the internet, except for Nerdfighteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, it's it, uh, it's been it's been really rewarding to to watch uh, as people sort of actually take the courses and start from you know not much knowledge to uh, a broader. A broader amount of knowledge. It's also very rewarding to see people uh, being like, I passed my AP exam because of you, and boy, that episode came out right in time for me, or else I would have been screwed. Right. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so there, there are lots of people with questions, Hank, so I want to start asking you questions, okay? You're going to ask me questions, okay. I'm going to ask you some questions. This is from Russell to Spain. Are you planning, we're answering questions on Twitter, by the way, at the Crash Course, at Real John Green, at Hank Green. Are you planning to cover more subjects like Salman Khan at the Khan Academy? I don't think he's asking if we're planning to cover the subject of Salman Khan. I think he's asking if we're planning to, <laughs> to be like Khan Academy. Um, it's just generally uh, very hard, but yes. I think that it would be fantastic if we can get into other topics. Um, Khan is amazing at, uh, at breadth, and I don't think that we're ever going to have that breadth, um, at least not in the short term, <clears throat> and certainly not with just the two of us. Um, right. Khan can do it all by himself because he's a uh, genius um, and has a different format than we do, and uh, we cannot do it by ourselves. Uh, that level of, of depth in uh, all topic areas, which he pretty much has covered all of them now. He's pretty much got every topic area there is. He's certainly uh, getting there. I mean, the, the yeah. Khan Academy, for those of you who don't know about it, is this incredible resource that was really, is really the brainchild of one person, Salman Khan. And, uh, I mean, there are thousands of videos, educational videos, but those videos are designed for highly motivated students. Um, they're, they're long. They, you know, they're designed for, for people who 
you know, go into the video wanting desperately to learn. And our, our, our video series, Crash Course, is designed um, for more, I guess, casual learners, um, you know, people who, people who see learning as part of, part of their life and not necessarily like just, just school focused, but also, you know, hopefully in a way that, that can be helpful to, to students. Um, Hank, do you guys have people editing your Vlog Brothers videos as well as your Crash Course videos? Asks Katie Twyman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just clicked on the wrong thing. Sorry, I was trying, trying to activate myself and I paused a video. Um, the answer to that question is that John and I still edit our Vlog Brothers videos. Um, occasionally, yeah. Rhonda will help me edit a Vlog Brothers video. That's him right there. Just um, pure panic. But <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. Uh, we still. We still do all of our Vlog Brothers editing, and uh, um, yeah, and, and I edit and all of Vlog Brothers videos. I mean, it's important to, to note that we also work a lot on Crash Course and SciShow. Um, but as you may have noticed, we aren't great video editors. Um, I am. I'm a wonderful editor. You're I'm an okay talented. editor. You're you're good at jump cuts. I mean, I I, I don't think that. You can, <laughs> I don't think I I wouldn't trust you to make a thought bubble. Let's put it that way. Yeah, though well, that's 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 more than just editing. But, but I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, it's a it's a skill set that that uh, we have we have just sort of been thrown into. Whereas a lot of other people are well trained, um, and so uh, for for SciShow and Crash Course, we have two full time editors here and one in Indianapolis. So that is a whole different world for us to have that kind of support. Um, but yeah. Anytime, the only time that I would ever like, not edit a vlog brothers video is there was literally something I wanted to do that I didn't know how to do, and that's that's what Michael's for. Yeah, I mean, we still, we, we, Hank and I both feel pretty strongly about keeping vlog brothers uh, its own separate thing and and kind of keeping it the thing that it always has been. Um, but Crash Course and SciShow allow us to live our dream of making really educational content, um, which is what we always wanted to do. We just never had the ability to do it because it takes a big team of people like I just don't know enough about the French Revolution um, to make a video about it you know and Hank no offense but like Hank doesn't know enough about meiosis to make an authoritative video on it and he certainly doesn't know enough about illustrating meiosis to you know do all the animations necessary to, to explain it. Hank you want to you want to answer some questions or do you want me to keep going? I, th I think that I could if I had the skill to be able to animate I think that I would, would I do have the knowledge necessary to animate meiosis but whatever I you're always so, saying that though I, no, no one no one is more convinced of, of, of his of, of his own breadth of talents than my brother I, I'm not saying talents I'm just saying I, I understand uh, the basic levels of biology otherwise I could not do this. Um, why is the new history show, this is for me, consistently focused on military and religion, and why did you choose the particular narrative that it has? Um, well, it's not exclusively focused on military and religion. I also talk a lot about the plague, and in fact, I think, I think ultimately, uh, arguably, uh, as I said in, in yesterday's Vlogbrothers video, um, microbes have a bigger effect on human history than either military or religion. Um, but and there's also there's also some focus on on technology and scientific development you know things like uh, how innovation and inventions changed um, uh, you know made the world smaller and made it easier to travel for instance across the Indian Ocean things like that um, but you know the focus is is on religion partly because that was the or that was one of the focuses certainly of, of lives in the time period that I'm talking about so you know people people's decisions, their values uh, were shaped in a lot of times, almost always actually, by, by their religious beliefs. And as those religious beliefs changed, a lot of responses to it changed. I'm always criticized by military historians for not talking enough about wars, so I'm glad you think I talk too much about wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we, I, try to be, I try to be as broad as possible, um, but, you know, our, I feel like my job is to try to talk about how decisions that were made over the by by people and also not by people over the course of over the course of world history led to the world that we have now and and that hopefully will allows us to to think sort of more broadly and with greater depth about the decisions that we're making now that are going to shape uh, you know the world for the next thousand or five thousand years or whenever um, we end up killing ourselves off 
<laughs> Hank, what was your favorite episode of Biology Crash Course so far? Um, I don't know. I like the early stuff a lot uh, where we're talking about this. Like, I'm a biochemist by training, and so that, that stuff was... Uh, I get more into that stuff, despite the fact that most people don't. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I also really enjoyed the episode we just did on natural selection, um, and uh, just because that's the, that's the area that sort of gets the most attention in in uh, our world, um, you know, in terms of policy and and like controversy. And I just like, you know, the opportunity to talk about that in a way that's not talking about the controversy and not like an argument between two sides, but just presenting the information, which I think John did a really good job of as well, you know, when you're talking about more hot button topics in history like Islam and Christianity and stuff like that. So it's really, really, you know, it's great to have an opportunity to talk about these things in an educational context on the internet when usually they're talked about in a polemical context on the internet. Right. I mean, Hank and I are really interested, really interested, and we have been for a long time, in depoliticizing traditionally politicized issues, particularly when they aren't political, like climate change, for instance, which is not a political problem, um, uh, or, uh, yeah, or Islamic history, which shouldn't be a political <laughs> problem. Yeah. Like, people then, shouldn't be, people shouldn't, but, uh, but it is, and, and you, have to, you have to acknowledge the, the complexity of that. Like, I mean, the, the, weird, the weirdest part about making that video, which was, that Islam video, I guess, was probably my favorite so far. Um, although I like this week's, the one that comes goes up tomorrow about Mansa Musa in, uh, in, in West Africa a lot. But uh, the, the thing about that Islam video that made me nervous was talking about, talking about things that Sunnis and Shias still disagree about. Um, and that, that was actually, that was where most of the hot, hot button conversation was. I mean, the rest of the it, it was great for the first couple of days, and we all we always experience this, Hank. Where the first couple of days, the discourse is astonishingly sophisticated and thoughtful, mm -hmm. and then slowly it degenerates. Yeah, there are fewer and fewer comments, and and uh, you start to see that there will be one. Like usually, the crazy comments get pushed down by the uh, by the intelligent comments, and then eventually there are fewer comments, and so the crazy comments don't get pushed down. And right. You know, the the uh, the need to respond to the crazy people, and then you end up with stupid conversations. But I do that too. I feel that same urge to respond to the troll. We have we have. I, a I was going to say that uh, after the video goes up, you're probably also getting fewer people who are subscribed to the channel because they're interested right. in content, right? And more people who find the video because they just Google Islam, right? And and they're, and they're looking for something to argue about. Let me just tell you, Michael, uh, incidentally, that um, if we can get to that point where you Google Islam and the first thing that comes up is crash course, <laughs> <laughs> that would be that's that winning. <laughs> um, John, we're, long, we're, we're a long ways off from that. But. I have a question for you uh, that no one is going to be polite enough to ask. Why do you think crash course history gets so many more views than crash course biology? Because it's about history and not about biology. <laughs> um, I mean, it's really, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to make history populist. I mean, to make history something that you would choose to learn about. Um, it, 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 there's a relatively low barrier to entry, right? Because we're all, um, <laughs> we're all human beings living amid history, and we all remember that there was a French Revolution or something. Um, <laughs> when it comes to studying biology, it... It is, it is, I mean, I, I don't buy that hard, soft science distinction, but there is that, there is that distinction that, like, you're going to have to learn some terminology. You're going to have to pay attention to the way that cells are built in order to later understand natural selection. And uh, there's a relatively high barrier to entry there. So I think that's the issue. Although, I mean, how astonishing is it that just, just a few months into this project, you know, 60,000 or 70,000 people are choosing to watch videos about mitosis? Yeah. Yep. I I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty consistently shocked. But what I always say to the people who are like, now what do you do? And, and they're like, but who pays for that? Who watches that? And I'm like, well, people who are learning these things choose right. to come and find them. I, I, or if they're not even learning them, they're just curious. And that's the most exciting thing to me is that like, we're creating content that people come out like, go out right. of the way to watch instead of, you know, have to watch in a classroom. Sorry, I forgot to click on myself before my monologue. But now oh, I'm nice. I'm glad that people got to see me, see me listening to you. 
Um, <laughs> I have a question from Philip White, and this has also been asked by a lot of other people. Um, it's, is Crash Course mostly supported by ads and by Google? What makes your medium different from television? Uh, and also, I've, I've frequently seen, um, uh, are you guys going to charge schools for Crash Course? Hmm. Um, we are at the moment supported almost, well, entirely. We are supported entirely by a grant from YouTube slash Google, um, and that is the reason why we can make the content. Uh, there is a sort of hope that at some point uh, this content could be could support itself uh, through advertising or through grants from other organizations. Uh, there are lots of educational grants in the world. Um, and uh, and also through, you know, sales of Mongols, T-shirts, and um, we recently... I don't know. I, 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 you're right, Hank. That's that's the key. Yeah, Mongol. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll all be rich. Why? I'm telling you, that's the that's the only path to true success. <laughs> no, but to answer to answer the <laughs> other question. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah. Um, to answer the right. other question, uh, Crash Course is already taught in hundreds of schools, which is amazing and something that we are really excited about and really grateful for. No, we don't charge them. No, we won't charge them. The whole idea of this project is to, is, is to find a new way to make educational materials possible that, that doesn't use that old model of charging academic institutions for the right to show those, um, to, 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 share that, to share that stuff in class. Um, we don't like that model. We think that it's inefficient. We think that, that schools could spend their money in different and better ways, um, and we want them to be spending their money in those ways. Um, and we want this to be supported through other things, whether it's advertising or, or, or grants or whatever. Um, so that was that was the idea of Crash Course. Is, is you know we we don't like the we we don't like the idea of you know having schools fund uh, educational video because we think there's a market for educational video. We think people want to watch it. We don't think people need to be forced to watch it. So. Um, it's also very interesting to have uh, come to the realization that um, you know this these things like what we're doing when you do it for free, people have a harder time taking you seriously, and they're like, well, one, you don't have a, a bunch of money to pay like salespeople to go into schools and try and sell the content and try and like explain to teachers like like do a do a symposium at like at a, you know a teacher conference and talk about how useful this content is, and that's what all the for-profit institutions are doing, and so we are in this situation where we're creating content that may very well be better. It's certainly cheaper because it's free, um, but um, a lot of places are less interested in it because they don't understand, like, how could this be better if it's so much cheaper, which is an interesting problem. Right. <laughs> well, but, you know, we're, we're just getting started, so it'll work out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hank? Do you, are you looking at Twitter? Because I'm looking at Twitter. I can keep asking questions, but I thought maybe you wanted to. I don't know. I don't understand how you can multitask like that. What do you mean? Look at Twitter and also talk? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's first off, you're, you're, when you're talking, I'm looking at Twitter. I'm not listening to whatever boring crap you're saying. So, <laughs> so there's that. Ah. Uh, well, there's, the, there's Katie. Uh, but more importantly, oh, no, but okay, oh, so... Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Keep talking. Um, there's Katie, who oh shoot, who asks, uh, will Crash Course ever be used for charitable purposes like teaching people in third world countries who can't afford schooling? Well, it's already used for that in the in the broadest sense. I mean, the the great thing about the the great thing about the mobile internet and the spread of the spread of broadband internet to uh, to the developing world is that it allows us to sort of take a jump in terms of infrastructure development. Uh, at least hopefully, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to develop telegraph lines and then telephone lines and then dial up and then this and this and this. You can just go to straight to 3G or 4G, which means that all of a sudden, not just not just students um, outside of schools in the developing world, but also students in schools in the developing world have the opportunity uh, to, to take advantage of all of the many educational resources that are freely available on the internet, whether it's Khan Academy or Crash Course or Ted Ed, which is doing great stuff, or Minute Physics, or CGP Grey, whatever it is. And um, that's, that's really, really exciting to us. And one of the things that kind of gets us fired up and makes us want to do this is the belief that, you know, that, that education is really central to development, that the biggest hurdle to development on some level 
is is education. And um, you know, this isn't the only way. I don't think that it's a magic bullet, but I think that it's one way. Um, and so I'm I'm really excited about that. And it's already happening. Uh, we already we already see lots of YouTube comments in Crash Course and SciShow from the developing world. But um, you know, hopefully in three to five years we'll see many many more. I have another question from you, this one from Samantha. What is the deal with the phrase of the week? Because I don't really understand it either, John. Yeah, it was not, probably not a good idea in retrospect. Um, and, <laughs> and I've never explained it well. So here's how it works. Um, every week, we take a phrase that someone suggested in comments, and we put it in the video. We somehow, I somehow managed to find a way to insert it into the script of the video. Um, and the idea there was that, People would guess at the phrase of the week, and then they would suggest phrases of the week. But people have mostly found it very confusing, which has left us with relatively few phrases of the week suggested, which is <laughs> even harder to work them into comments, which is why I had to write an entire episode about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I can work Kim Kardashian's name into an episode of Crash Course. I guess I'm just going to have to write the episode of Crash Course about Kim Kardashian. What a disaster. John, a question from Neva. Do you think that Crash Course will branch out into literature and the arts from its more, like, its less literature and arts-based foundations? Um, yeah, I mean, we are, I don't know, I, I, I'd love, to, I'd love to teach art history down the road, I, I, and I definitely would like to teach um, some kind of world literature class. It's challenging um, because not everyone, everyone is a part of human history. Not everyone has read Things Fall Apart. You know, everyone knows there was a French Revolution. Not everyone is deeply familiar with the plot of Macbeth or, or desires to read it again. Um, so I think that's one of the challenges, but I, 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 we definitely want to do it, and we, we, have to, we just have to figure out the right way to do it. Um, whether it's all of us read the book together and then talk about it or, or whatever it is, um, or whether we focus on shorter works, which, which most um, uh, early college classes tend to do now, for better or worse. Um, I don't know. But yeah, that, that's something I'd like to do. I'd love to do arts, um, art history, and I'd love to do um, like comp, like English language and, and usage and grammar. I know that that stuff sounds really boring, but it is, it, it is actually astonishingly exciting. Um, and I get really geeked out about it, and like we get to talk about, uh, you know, what what's wrong with what what is or is not wrong with ending a sentence with a preposition, and what a preposition is, and how it functions in the world, and how it how it opens up the the, the world of observation to us. I get really really psyched. Um, so Hank, what what do you want to teach? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> Good, good job, Hank. Stuff. Um, stuff. Yeah, more sciencey stuff. Do you want to teach like uh, physics, or do you want to teach like uh, geology? Um, well, ge both of those are very interesting to me. Um, I, I probably, I would really like to teach biochemistry, just because that's that's I just know a lot about it, and right. uh, I get excited about it pretty easily. Um, I'd love to have someone teach physics, but I don't think I'm the right person. Um, no, I, I, I also would love to have someone teach physics. Yeah, and I also think uh, I, I, I really, there's sort of a, a distinction between sort of hard physics of like of Newtonian and also beyond. And then there's the, a discussion of sort of broader, like this is how weird quantum mechanics is. And I like to talk about that stuff, even though uh, at a base mathematical level, I'm nowhere near uh, understanding it. But can you I, talk about that stuff without talking about the math, though? I mean, that's one of my. Yeah, I mean, you could talk about like like what a quark physically is and why they why they right. have color, what color charge means, why they change color, like what the weak force is, what the strong force is. Um, you could talk about that stuff, and you can do it in a way that's that's you know lets people understand it, um, and and so like you actually get a pretty like a, a marvelously good understanding of of the structure of the universe without having to talk about math and that I, we do we talk about that stuff on SciShow. Um, yeah, to do to do a course on on quantum physics um, would be cool, but probably would better be done by someone who is not me. Right. That reminds me of when I was writing Will Grayson, Will Grayson, and I I was writing about Schrodinger's cat, and I had this like I had this character, this this seventeen year old girl Jane. 
um, going on and on and on about the mathematics involved in, in the problem that led to the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, um, all of which, al almost all of which was written by my cousin Blake. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't even written by me. By my cousin, I mean Sarah's cousin. Hank's like, it's not, yeah. I, we don't no, have, we don't have a cousin, Blake. Blake. <laughs> Blake who? Blake, he just had a baby. Blake, he didn't have the baby. His wife had the baby. This is a disaster of a story. Um, <laughs> but my, my point is that eventually it became obvious to me that having this like six-page monologue from this 17-year-old girl about math I didn't understand was not going to be an asset to my novel. <laughs> uh, I just have received word that my wife has a question. All right. I just think that it might be interesting for people to know what the process is in making a crash course video. And I know that it's different for each of you, so you can talk about that. I don't know if you heard, Catherine, but what she said was uh, maybe our, our processes for creating crash course videos are different, and maybe we could talk about the actual process behind. Sure. Like, like from things the, have to from be made. Yeah, from beginning to end. Yeah, my, mine are made a, a quite a long time in advance. We are recording like eight episodes out right now. So I, by the time the episode goes online, I'm like, what? I don't remember that. What is this stuff? Well, that's not ideal. Ours is ours is filmed well in advance too. Um, I think I think we're about the same far, same amount out. By the way, Hank, CGP Gray is watching us. Not, don't get nervous, but. Um, He's asking questions, so I think he's watching us. Um, he just asked, how do you feel of talking about subjects on which you might not be experts yourself? To which my answer is, uh, not so bad. I mean, I'm not a historian at all, and here I am cranking away like an expert. I mean, we have educators working, working with us, so that's, yeah. that's the reason I don't feel that nervous about it. But it is a little weird. Um, but to answer Catherine's question, um, yeah, it's very different from, from like traditional video blogging because well, I'm, I don't know about you, Hank, but I'm in a studio, and um, Stan and Danica are there with me, and, you know, they're, they're there to make sure that, you know, the lighting is right, and all the stuff that I never understood in video blogging, and the sound sounds good, and, um, and that, the, you know, Danica makes the beautiful chalkboard illustrations and all that stuff. Um, and then, but, but the rest of it really is like video blogging, except that I don't usually make a video blog from a script, because... I'm, ta you know, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking in my own words about something I care about, um, and so that, that is a little bit like video blogging. I don't know what your experience is, though. Yeah, but we, I mean, we write, we write scripts for Vlogbrothers videos too. But you oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you a lot? Yeah, I script, I script a fair amount. Wow. Um, yeah, I, wow. Always find I don't. It goes, it goes significantly better by script. I do script uh, the, the thoughts from places, you'll be surprised to hear. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Astonishing. Um, ah, well. The thing about the, the crash course that's different from the show is that you can't the breadth of the whole right. series of videos. Right. So, I mean, we from start end out. And you plan right. what you cover. Mm -hmm. Those topics are pretty much chosen, right? Right. Yeah, right. so I have a list of like we, we sat down at the beginning, the beginning of the process, and we, you know, we sat down with a biology textbook with a biology teacher, uh, with, um, you know, sort of the AP guide to what you're supposed to know at the end of an AP biology class, and we were like, okay, how are we going to put these into classes? And we stuck to that pretty much. Occasionally, there will be a script that is, you know, 20 pages long, and we'll be like, we should probably do this in two episodes. Um, but generally, um, yeah. That. Um, yeah, when we first started, the writer, Raul Meyer, sent a list of 40 topics he wanted to cover, and we had a little bit of back and forth about which, you know, which 40 we should go with, and then we, we eventually figured it out, although now I want to make, I want to make a 41st one, because I promised the last episode would be about the, the t-shirts in the global economy, which, as you know, Hank, is, is something I find completely fascinating, much to your consternation. Um, and I really, really want to make that video, so I, we might have to cut something along the way or else do a special bonus episode. Speaking of special bonus episodes, we have a couple surprises, and Hank, do you want to crank one of those out now since we're at the midway point of our, of our live show? Yeah, let me just get it ready. Okay, Hank is going to get something ready. While he does that, I will answer another question. Um, would you let someone outside the Vlogbrothers teach in Crash Course? Absolutely. Um, you know, 
the reason that we haven't so far is strictly, frankly, kind of a budgetary thing. Um, yeah. Hank and I are free. Uh, <laughs> we're free and, and we have a lot of experience at doing this and we kind of know how to do it. And there aren't that many people who know how to do it and those who do generally aren't free. Um, a lot of people in comments, Hank, have suggested that we have Neil Tyson, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, teach um, physics, which would be great. That would be great. Um, I, I don't think he's available. Yeah, he's a busy guy. He's, it's, he's it's got not, a bunch of stuff going on. It's project that we do here. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this. Um, there's no guarantee that it will, will work, but we're, we, have a, we have a process by which, by which uh, we do this. So <laughs> I'm just going to share one of my windows, and, uh, and then we will watch a video. Hopefully. Yep. Um... Oh, we're recording. Oh, God. Hi, my name is John Green, and this is Crash Course World History. <laughs> Whoops. Ow. Hi, my name's Ow. My name is John Green. I'm the host of Crash Course World History, and that hurt. Hi there, my name is John Green. This is champagne in a plastic cup, and today we're going to talk about Egypt, as you might have guessed from the hieroglyphics behind me. Pardon me, I'm drunk. Hi there, my name is John Green. This is Crash Course. You want to do that again? Fall of Rome. According. According. Oh. Hi, I'm John Green, and today. God. Hank, did you just no idea. go away? <laughs> I, can you, Hank, talk? I did all of them. In order now to I'm scared them. because I'm alone in the live show. And the answer is no. Hank, Hank, I can hear what you're saying, just so you know. Hank, hi. Hank, oh, I missed it. Next week we will journey. Mm, missed it. Oh, hello again, Hank. Is that anti-feminist to never talk about women except when I'm talking about how they're brutal, This isn't going well. Can we exit? I've tried. Can you it's a great me? video, but uh, we'll, upload it. we'll upload it so that you can actually watch it instead of seeing it in a series of uh, apparent screen caps. It's an it's a, uh, episode of Crash Course Outtakes that, uh, or, uh, that, um, that's, that Stan put together. Um, there's also one of Hank's. Hank, you're a beautiful black screen right now. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you can't hear me as well. Yeah, I can hear everything that you're saying. I could hear oh. everything that you were saying while the video was playing, too. Oh, was I, was I saying... Was it, did, yeah. I, did, I, did I say any curse words? Yeah. No, I don't think you said any specific curse words, but they were implied. <laughs> um, anyway, is there any way that you could not be a gigantic black screen? Because it makes me sad. I, I would also love to not be a gigantic black screen. I miss but when I, you I looked, looked like a Hank. Really? That was my favorite part of the show, was when you looked like Hank. <laughs> I also, I love, I love it when, uh, I, have, I have such a good voice, though, John. Um, find a way to turn off the screen share. That's the key. Oh, no, I've done that. Oh. You just don't have a... Is your camera not on anymore? Do you not have this, the little green light that I have? It is on. Oh. All right. Rock and roll, man. <laughs> um, I guess you should just put me up on the screen, and then you will just be a voice. You're up on the screen. Okay. Yeah. It's just going to be me from here on out, it seems like. So I will... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so we both have... Uh, we, we, both made, we both made special... Outtakes so we both have. Oh, Hank, that was very loud. Don't do that again. Um, we both have we both have special outtakes videos for for you guys uh, that you can watch. Um, but we'll upload them to the Crash Course channel or Vlog Brothers or something so that you can watch them instead of just um, doing it, doing it this way. All right. So I guess I will uh, I will ask some more questions of the disembodied black screen that used to be my brother. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, do you do foreign subtitles at all, Hank? Someone uh, asked it. Someone, someone offered to make Czech subtitles to Crash Course. It said, if, if, we, if he made them, would we use them, or she? Let me just switch over to my black screen here so you guys can see me. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, uh, we are actually investigating at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, I figure if, if they can't see you, then I'll, I'll do something funny on the That'll screen. Be entertaining. 
while you're talking. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, we are looking at uh, a, an application. We're looking at helping to create an application of sorts that will allow us to um, streamline the creation of, of subtitles to our videos because that's something that we really want, not just for Crash Course and SciShow, but for all of the internet to right. be uh, to have access to. Um, we're just not. We we have always felt like there there could be a much better system to do that, and hasn't been. Um, the answer to your question: First off, all the, all the world history episodes are already subtitled in English. The answer to your question: Would we use Czech subtitles if you gave them to us? Is yes. Although we don't know how to use them yet, so we would have to learn how to use them. But we will. Um, so yes, that is the answer to that question. Um, uh, someone says that they're listening to dubstep while they uh, while while they watch us, Hank. Well, that's okay because our our uh, manager of the office here listens to dubstep while he manages us. Wow, um, that's 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 crazy. Um, I'm going to ask you some more questions, Hank. Okay. You can also ask me questions now that you you are you are just a black screen. I am. Um, how much of your houses have been turned into video studios? <laughs> Only like a third or so. Well, Hank's house is very small because it's it's a green house, not in the sense that it is owned by a person named Green, but in the sense that it is a eco-friendly house, right? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. It strikes me as very green. You have like bamboo flooring or something. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's it's a it's a new house. It is. It's fairly small, I guess, by modern standards. Uh, yeah, but, by modern standards. But whenever you go into it, like, what, that's one of the things that I've been really into, actually, when researching Crash Course, and I will let you finish in a moment, but, you know, since you're just a black screen, I feel like <laughs> I, I, I own the video now. Um, but uh, I, in researching Crash Course, I am always astonished by the luxury that we take for granted that was literally non-existent to 99.9995% of the population until, like, 80 years ago. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, when I, when I went to Haiti and, like, we, I, I, like, went over to someone's house, um, and it was their, um, their bedroom, um, there, there was, they lived in, a, it was, it was a two-room house. One of the rooms had a bed in it. You walked into the, the door. It had a door. Uh, you walked into the door, and there there was a bed, and there was a desk, and it was maybe, you know, 20 square feet. And then behind that, there was another bed and another desk, uh, and another sort of room. And the and then and this was a nice like this was a nice house in Haiti. And then out the back, there was a pit toilet, and like right. that was the that was you know like, a a couple of people doing fairly well, and um. And so it's, it's always very strange to me when people refer to my house as small. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, your house is not small, but it's small compared to most American houses. Yeah, um, so I, yeah, I, you know, but we got, you've got the radiant floor heating, and it's basically a refrigerator in there in right. terms of letting heat out. Um, so right. So we have to have an air circulation system or else we'd suffocate. Um, yeah. yeah, that all sounds very fancy. I just live in a normal American house. Because you unlike you, very normal American house with your crazy that. Montana <laughs> wilderness leftism, I'm an American. I'm a regular, normal American. So, uh, <laughs> long story short, I also converted about a third of my house into a video studio. Um, but but my third is bigger. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, one of one of my bedrooms is a video studio. Um, yeah, uh, my whole basement is, and then I, I do some filming upstairs as well. Yeah. Um, but then uh, I would show you around our office and show you, like, because right now I'm in, I'm in the Crash Course office. This is not my house. Um, yeah. I would show you around if you could see me, but you can't. Um, um, will, you, um, will, will you look at some questions while, while you're there being a black screen so that we can answer good questions? Yeah, sure. Um, oh, uh, Man, Manu uh, on Twitter has a really important question for you, Hank, which is that have you tried turning it on and off again? <laughs> I mean, I could do that, but then, then the entire Hangout would end. Oh, uh, there is apparently already a cool app that Philip DeFranco uses for open source subtitles. Oh, really? 
Yeah, it's called um, captiontube.appspot.com. So thank you very much for letting us know about that, Christine. Um, uh, okay, Hank. Oh, someone wants Hank to join. Uh, CGP Gray suggests that Hank join the video on a third laptop, which isn't a terrible idea. Um, okay. Um, so, Hank, let's. Uh, do you have questions for me, or should I keep asking you questions? By the way, we're answering questions on Twitter at the Crash Course, and also at Real John Green and at Hank Green. There are a lot of questions about interns, Hank. I don't know if all these interns live in, in Montana or not, but there are a lot of them, so I thought I'd ask. What do you are, mean by interns? Our interns? Do, do, you, do, you have, do you have need of them? There seem to be a lot of people who wish to become your intern. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, we'd need people to help all the time, but I don't know. Uh, we, we also would need an intern to have the capacity to hire and manage interns. <laughs> Yeah, sort of the biggest problem that we have right now is figuring out is figuring out that. Um, but yes, uh, down the road, certainly, we, we do want to have interns. Um, uh, Crash Course Indianapolis is going to have an intern over the summer starting uh, in a couple weeks. Um, and I think that, that will be great for us. But uh, I don't know. I don't know about anything else. Um, um, do you have any other questions, Hank, or do you want me to keep going? I'm sorry, the reason why I'm not um, answering questions is because I'm trying to fix the problem that we're having. Okay, well then I'll, I'll answer some questions. Um, someone asks, Nigel Prentice asks, hey, how can I score some 2D glasses? So for those of you who don't know, my brother Hank invented the 2D glasses, uh, which are like 3D glasses, except that you go to a 3D movie and you see that movie in a crisp two dimensions. Uh, you can get them at 2D-glasses.com. Is that right, Hank? Well, Whatever, just Google 2D glasses. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think it's, of all of the things that Hank has invented, and he has invented far too many things, 2D glasses are my favorite because they're extremely funny and um, also, like, <laughs> astonishingly useful. So most things aren't. Um, I'm just going to keep talking while Hank uh, mumbles quietly to his team because apparently he's not figured out how to mute himself on video. Uh, I did. I figured it out. I just undid it, and then I redid it, and then I undid it again, and it was... Yeah. Well, Hank, there's only 15 minutes left, so I'm not sure that there's necessarily that much purpose to getting your face back for 10 minutes. I'd rather have a high-quality conversation between me, my face, and you, a black screen. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, great. So we'll just do what we were doing until you decided to try to make it work. Um, so someone so asked when, when I got a corgi, because recently in a video I showed my, myself with a couple of dogs, a greyhound and a corgi. Um, that was my greyhound. It was not my corgi. That corgi is named Abby, uh, and it, it sometimes lives in our office. It is the uh, corgi of our technical, technical director, Nick Jenkins, who you will sometimes ref hear me refer to, as John will occasionally refer to Stan. I will refer to Jenkins or Nick. Um, don't call him Leroy. He doesn't like it. <laughs> um, I do like I I do like referring to Stan, but it has to be said that I generally when I make references to Stan, it's it's because of actual things that Stan did or said moments before that that right. it was recorded. I don't know if that's true for for you and Leroy, but um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Yes, um, yes, Nick is standing there the whole time while right. I'm watching videos. So um, he, will, he will be telling me to do things, and I will, uh, I will invariably say, okay, mom. Um, <laughs> because he's always like, look at the camera. And I'm a number like, of people have asked me to, have asked what my, uh, to teach a creative writing crash course, which I can't do because I don't know how to teach creative writing. Um, I have no idea how to teach such a thing, but there are, there are people who can do it, and I admire them. Um, but I, I know absolutely nothing about how to write a story except by, by doing it. Um, so I, I wouldn't know how to teach that. Um, and right now we're focused on more, um, I would say, traditionally academic subjects that, uh, that are maybe undertaught or not taught as, as well as they could be at schools. Whereas I think um, certainly at, at, at colleges, creative writing, there tend to be really good creative writing professors because, you know, there are a lot of writers who teach for a living or for part of their living anyway. Right. Um, I've also got a question. Uh, are we ever going to join forces and make an epic 
history of biology or the biology of history episode. That would be good. Would I'd be. like to do that. I like that idea. I think I, I actually think that's kind of a cool idea. Um, it, later on, when you know, when we both maybe in like the 30th week or something, when where uh, Crash Course World History is relatively modern and biology is relatively human focused. Um, <laughs> Yep. It, it might be it might be really cool to talk about the relationship between history and microbes, or to talk about the relationship between you know evolutionary biology and and contemporary history or something. That that might be cool. I'm also really interested in in the actual history of science, um, like the the men and women who uh, basically created the institution of science and who, right. who created people who created biochemistry and who the like sort of found in genetics and a lot of these people are like we do a series on SciShow called Great Minds. Is that what it's called? Yep. That's what it's called. And um, and that's been really interesting to do. Um, we I don't I don't I know this is written but I don't know if we've recorded it yet but we do a we did a great episode on Fritz Haber. Is that his name? My, my, right. So yeah. Also did the Marie Curie one. Yes, the, the Marie Curie one is like was. Uh, featured in the New York Times and um, on Jezebel, which I find equally impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> my two favorite news sources. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the people obviously like those a lot, but Fritz Haber's super interesting dude because he basically saved billions of people by trying to kill people for the Germans in World War One, and then went on to uh, create chemical weaponry, and his wife was so despondent that he... Uh, was only interested in killing people, and she told him to stop or else. He said no, and she shot herself to death. Wow. And then he went to a party. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, they, they, they are some, you know, the people who have a big impact on history tend to be um, maybe perhaps a bit eccentric, but I do, I do also think <laughs> that it goes both <laughs> ways, that we also sort of look to the eccentric stories and mm -hmm. put them at the center of history, you know? Well, I mean, the dude figured out how to fix nitrogen, which doesn't sound that impressive, but he, it, it basically made it so that, you know, all of Europe didn't starve at the beginning of the 19th century. Right. right. But, uh, there, but, but, like, I'm just, saying, I'm just saying there are lots of historical actors, right. important historical actors, who weren't crazy. Yes, that's true. That, um, it, I feel, like that's, I feel like that's an, under, an underappreciated fact. Of right. both the history of both history and the history of science, like like Cantor, for instance, I mean, hugely important mathematician, but like these days, famous mostly for devoting the second half of his life to trying to prove that Shakespeare didn't write Shakespeare, right? Um, and that seems to me, it seems to me a little unfortunate that we end up conflating genius and and insanity. Um, there does seem to be a bit of a casual relationship between the two. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to see some data on that. <laughs> Like, well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I know a lot of crazy people who aren't geniuses. Um, I said I, I know a lot of crazy people who aren't geniuses, um, That's inclu true. including myself. That's true. Um, I think I, what, what we really need to do is sort of f uh, figure out the per capita level of crazy. Right. Um, pretty high. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think it's probably pretty high. For Hank, besides the AP curriculum, how do you determine what to talk about in the biology crash course videos? Well, first, he chooses what's sexy. That's true, actually. Really? Uh, we, we try and find things where we can have the title of the video have the word sex in it. <laughs> it's pretty easy in biology. Um, no, it's... Uh, it, Keep it classy, it, Green. It's, it's the stuff that I really enjoy that, um, it, it, you know, we like to have it almost, you know, it's 10 minutes long, so there has to be kind of a narrative. Um, and so we try and, and when we're figuring out what to talk about to create a, uh, a story around it. But generally, we do choose a lot of it based on exact, like, those, that exact criteria, which is, you know, we, we're trying to teach a course here, and so there's standards that have been decided upon, and I may not agree with them, but we are going to agree with them because otherwise we're not helping people. Right. So. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's important to, to note there that, um, Hank and I both, when we're making these videos, and and, re, and also in SciShow and um, and in Blog Brothers too, like we do look for narratives. Um, we look for ways to tell stories. Like even though I was sick yesterday and I'm still quite sick, I apologize by the way if I'm off my game a little bit, but my my head is pounding with tiny chicken poop. Um, even then, um, 
I tried to make a, a, a story about Sarah calling me and telling me that I had to vote and then going to vote. Um, and when, when I'm making history videos, I think about that a lot. I think about the fact that this is a show um, and history is a narrative. And that's one of the ways to make it engaging and to, to make the learning process, I think, deeper in a way is if, is if you can engage with it as narrative and not just engage with it as a set of facts that appear to have been like laid at your doorstep that you now have to memorize. Um, so, for instance, a lot of people have asked if, if there's any way that we could ever make a crash course about math or if math is just, quote, too boring. Well, the truth of math is that it's not boring at all, as you know, if you watch By Heart videos. Um, math is really exciting, and it's also, in many ways, very narrative. I mean, Hank was talking about the history of science, but the history of math is, is equally uh, exciting, and, and it, in the same way that the history of science was marked by these, you know, huge discoveries that, that then lead to these big, big consolidations of knowledge, the same thing happened in, in the history of mathematics, and, you know, talking about that from a historical perspective turns it into a narrative and I think makes it a lot more fun to learn about. So I do think there is a way to teach math and have it be really interesting. I have a question from Moi Moi Micardo. It is, uh, Michael Aranda is awesome! <laughs> yeah. right. I wasn't aware that that was a question. Um, I, I've never doubted Michael Aranda's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, Hank, people, uh, Hector Hernandez says, where do you get your information from in Crash Course and why don't you cite it? Do Good we not cite it? We do. We cite it. Biology does citations every video. Catherine, who is in charge of um, citations, says that biology does citations <laughs> on every video. So this question is clearly for John. Well, biology, yeah, the biology, the biology part is really well cited. Um, we don't, we don't cite things because um, I, I wouldn't know how to begin citations. So for uh, when we talk, we've done a couple of videos. I don't think any of them have uploaded yet. That are sort of deep reads of of a book, of a famous book of history. Um, so we'll take, you know, a, one of these modern historical classics and we'll use it as a way into talking about some historical phenomenon, like the Columbian Exchange, for instance, um, which was the exchange of microbes and people and plants and animals between the Europe and Asia and Africa and the Americas. Um, and in that, we're going to cite a source because much of the much of the conversation that we're having is about a book. But when we're talking about sort of these broad historical um, trends, we don't cite sources because they're not really that sourcey. Um, but I guess we could do better citations, and uh, that's a good suggestion. And we'll look we'll look to it. I do. I will tell you that it is a bit of a pain in the butt. Well, um, that's the other reason we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to. <laughs> I don't like to do things that are hard. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you have other questions? We have five minutes left in our big show, Hank, and we're not going to be able to show. Well, we have to upload it. Do you think we can we upload it to? Um, what we'll do is is uh, is what we'll we'll have it uploaded to to Crash Course as a as a um, a video that is unlisted, and we will tweet it from the Crash Course account. Why can't we list it? Why can't we just show it to the people? I don't know, because maybe in the future we we will want to, because I don't, because you have a policy of not putting. Um, well, we can out. unlist it. We can unlist it later. What do you mean? What? We can we can just make it unlisted later. Oh, I see. Okay. That's I think that'll work. work. Yeah, let's do it. We're putting it up. Okay. <laughs> I I Hank, I'm the one with the face here. I make the. <laughs> The face is in charge. The face makes the show. Well, that's well. You now the black screen is in charge. I remember. I, I now I'm feeling nostalgic for early in the live show when you had a face. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know that was, that was the best days. part. Back when I had a face, and that wasn't just a disembodied voice. You know, I always, I always get nostalgic for the recent past, and in this case, it's 30 minutes ago when you had a voice. Um, but we will, we'll. Uh, Maybe we'll upload one gag reel now and one next week. What do you think of that, Hank? That sounds like a plan. All right, so we'll upload we'll upload mine that you sort of got to see now, and then we'll upload Hank's, which I have to say is even funnier. And if anything, it, it, the thing that surprised me most about watching your gag reel, Hank, is how often you had to be bleeped. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's what you would say just then. Um, it didn't surprise me how often I had to be bleeped. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, I, uh, mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It's, a, uh, it's a dirty time there in, in the in the studio. Well, it's for me at least. It's very high pressure because yeah. I know we only have, you know, I know we only have like you know six hours or whatever to film two episodes, and I get really mad at myself when I screw up and I don't say and I can't say things right. And um, the way that I get deal with getting really mad at myself is saying saying words I shouldn't say. I have a question for both of you that's kind of related to that. Before you guys did Crash Course and Sideshow, you both mostly just filmed by yourself in a bedroom or whatever without other people around. So what was the transition like having to go into a studio where all of a sudden you've got someone working the camera and someone doing script supervision and, you know, for Hank there's like uh, snake handlers in the room or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> there were snake handlers. Yeah, I mean, one of the keys for, to my success is is no snakes. <laughs> <laughs> and what? Um, no snake I handlers. I don't do well with snakes, and I don't do well with people who do well with snakes. Uh, um, yeah, it was definitely a transition. The first time I went into the studio and I was like, okay, there's people in here with me. I was not very natural. I was not very comfortable. Um, I have gotten over that. It's still definitely more pressure than uh, filming at home, and, and I definitely feel drained afterward, and I'm like, oh, I need to go to sleep now. Oh, good. I'm glad that you have that. We have a wrap-up question, an excellent wrap-up question from CGP Gray. Well, can I, first, can I first answer that question, though, that Michael just asked? I thought you did already. No. Okay, well, um, I, I only had a joke answer. The real answer is that I didn't feel awkward at all, but it's because... It's Stan and Danica. Like the the other day, a reporter for the Chicago Tribune was watching me record, and I was super bad, um, and not in the good way, but in the <laughs> genuinely bad way. Um, I was really awkward, and I was talking too fast, and I couldn't s get my lines out. And it was really interesting because I I just I had a level of comfort with Stan and Danica immediately that I just don't have with most people and it was a good lesson which is that um, I can't do it in front of just anyone I have to, it has to be the right um, the right people so it, it's a, fun because I'm friends with them and I, I like them and you know they're nerd fighters and and I mm -hmm. it doesn't feel awkward if mm -hmm. it if it feels awkward if I feel like I'm being watched I get very bad yeah yeah, uh, we had like six people in the studio the other, the other day because we had a bug handler. He came in with some giant bugs. Bug handler. Really cool. Wow, I really do not cool. like bug handlers. Um, some giant rhinoceros beetles are like the size of your fist. Um, Shut up. <laughs> and they had, and we brought in a, uh, he, he had a pupa, like a, a rhinoceros beetle in the pupa stage. Oh, which God. Is, like, hard casing, but it's like writhing around. It's so cool. Oh, God. Uh, so we, we were doing... You know, I know uh, that Henry is my son. So thank you. What? Before we get to the wrap-up question, can I tell you how I know Henry is my son? How? Um, we saw a beetle the other day. We were walking in the woods, and we saw a beetle. And um, Henry, Henry said, Daddy, beetle! And I was like, oh, God! And I, I, I pulled him away, of course, because, you know, beetles are very harmful, potentially. And, um, <laughs> and, and about five minutes later, we were just, like, walking along the, the edge of, of the White River, and Henry looked up at me and he said, Daddy, Beatles, scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't particularly comfortable with the rhinoceros beetles, but I was very excited by them. Yeah, I mean, this beetle um, was the size of maybe a roach, but even so, I was terrified. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Moving on. What's our wrap-up question from our friend CGP Gray? Our friend CGP Gray says, "If you're looking for a wrap-up question, where do you see Crash Course in a year or two? Uh, that's a great question. I'll let you handle it. No, oh, just the black screen talking. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I think that there are, are multiple paths for Crash Course. Um, and they all excite me. And some of them are smaller scale, and some of them are much larger. Um. What I'd really like is for there to be broader infrastructure behind the videos where it's not just not just a video, but it has a place where it lives. There's a sort of a, a better question and answer system than YouTube comments. There are potentially like worksheets or other other resources, whether or not they're physical or not. Um, ways to ways to you know reemphasize the information that you've got into your head during this crash course episode um, because watching a show is one thing but then watching it and taking a 
uh, doing a worksheet or taking a short quiz uh, to reinforce it, and then a couple weeks down the line doing that again, you really end up with um, a, a lasting knowledge of a topic, and that seems like the sort of thing that, um, like an innovation on top of an innovation that could really be powerful. Um, so that that's something that I really like to do, um, but as far as it being significantly different than it is now, um, just more of it, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like there to be more. I'd like there to be more teachers and more courses and um, more more stuff. That's the first thing that I would like. I would also like what Hank wants. Um, and I'd really like to expand the idea to include, um, you know, background on historical events. Um, so, for instance, uh, when you see the Greek debt crisis, um, or, or when when you know when Greece is having a debt crisis, which these days is usually, um, <laughs> you, you can it, Crash Course could provide a place where you can go and get background both on debt crises and traditional, you know, tr sovereign defaults over the course of history and how that generally affects national economies and whether austerity historically has has led to faster recoveries than defaults and questions like that, but you could also get historical background on, um, you know, on Greece's economy, or if, or if you're looking at the Syrian riots, you can, or not riots, I should say, revolution, um, you can go and you can get background on the history of the Syria over the last 100 or 200 years that will allow you to have a better informed opinion about news stories that are going on today. So I see that as, as within the, the, you know, the idea of Crash Course and what Crash Course really want, you know, is about and what, what we can do well. Um, so I'd like to expand it into that, that as well. That's wonderful. Um, it's an exciting thing that we're doing together, John. Oh, thanks. I, I hope so. I mean, it, they decide if it's exciting, not us. But we are having fun doing it, and um, it's a real privilege to be able to do it, and we feel really, really lucky. So uh, thank you guys all for, for watching and for being awesome. And Hank, thank you for um, being a black screen so that I could be the star of the show. That was very generous of you. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thanks to all 4,152 of you. Sorry to leave you in the cold, but we will still be on, uh, on, on the Crash Course on Twitter, and uh, you will see our first outtakes reel being uploaded to Crash Course, youtube.com slash Crash Course, momentarily. All right. Don't forget to be awesome. BFTBA.